We finally got a look at NASCAR's new Netflix series, Gunther Steiner's out at Haas, and we have a couple of NASCAR driver announcements to talk about. The off-season stays busy. Plus, we have a desk now. Two desks, one office. Uh, hopefully you guys didn't look that up as kids and left you scarred for life like uh, did me. But Wednesday came with a bunch of announcements, including NASCAR showing off their new Netflix series, NASCAR Full Speed is what it's called. Five episodes, 45 minutes apiece, all coming out on January 30th in the lead up to The Clash the next weekend at the Los Angeles Coliseum. It looks great. From what we've seen from it, sure, it was only a 60 second sizzle reel basically, but it was shot really well. It's NASCAR's answer to Drive to Survive, right? Without all of the staged scenes that we've seen become pretty prevalent in Drive to Survive, which is such a bummer. Oh, that wasn't good? All right, let's do another take now. Yeah, Total Wolf, George Russell, that was really bad. The previews that we've seen for season six of Drive to Survive or season seven, whatever it's in now, between Zach Brown and Landon Norris looks really cringy as well. So hopefully the NASCAR series doesn't have that. We saw them shooting at tracks across the country last year, and it should do a pretty good job of capturing what these guys go through, both on the track and off the track. Off the track, you get to see their personal lives. We saw Kyle Larson knock his kid in the head with a hockey stick there. Somebody's kid's driving a car, which feels like peak NASCAR, right? But then you get also the dynamic of relationships. You saw Ryan Blaney's, now fiance, be featured in it. Same with Bubba Wallace's wife. And then there is some bit of Denny Hamlin's family dynamic that's going to be in there as well. Tyler Reddick's girlfriend or wife, fiance, not really sure, also made an appearance in the uh, trailer too. So you know you're going to get a little bit of everything. Plus they're going to show a lot of the driving action and a lot of crashes based on what we saw in the trailer. And that's not necessarily a bad thing per se. You're trying to attract a casual fan, somebody that knows nothing about NASCAR with this series right? That's the whole point of this, to try to bring the sport to a new audience. And the barrier of entry putting it on Netflix is pretty low. There's millions upon millions of Netflix subscribers out there. Netflix makes it featured for the couple days that it first comes out. That puts it in front of new eyeballs and hopefully it picks up some drive to survive like Steam if they do it for a second and hopefully third season after that. If all that happens, that's good for the sport. New eyes, new fans means new money. And more money coming into the sport is never a bad thing. Look at the boom that Formula One has had because of Drive to Survive and all of the new sponsorship money that every team has been able to tap into. Hopefully that can happen for NASCAR as well. So we'll see what happens after this five episode season comes out. But again, I'm excited about it. Not super psyched on the whole like life and death aspect of it. And granted, I don't actually have a problem with that because racing is dangerous. Racing is inherently dangerous. And I think we all understand that. But when that's like your big selling point all the time, I kind of get turned off by that. But again, I'm looking at it from the from the point of view of a diehard fan, somebody that's been around this for years upon years now, and not somebody that just has never seen it before. Somebody seen that Ryan Priest wreck at Daytona, that's going to catch their attention. Caught our attention if you're like a diehard fan, but probably for a different reason. Being like, oh man, like how did the car hold up is really sort of what we were looking at. And I think some fans will look at that and be like, treat it the same way they looked at Roman Grosjean's crash in Bahrain uh, when he was with Haas. We are like, oh, is he going to survive this? Again, sizzle reel, try to get people to tune in, and I think that's what they're going for here. Outside of that, I like the way that they're presenting the drivers, the, the different angles that they got, specifically that shot from behind the pit box looking out at the front stretch of Daytona. Love stuff like that. Get a look at the driver's training regimen. Again, cool. Some things that we don't necessarily get to see, or at least if you don't like not a diehard following everybody on social, you generally don't get to see that. So I'm excited about everything that comes along with that. And hopefully, like I said, brings in new fans because that was the whole point of this. The other thing about this trailer that was absolute perfection was Marty Smith. And I know I have not been the biggest Marty Smith guy from time to time. I'm sure other people haven't as well. Maybe his his accent feels a little bit put on at times, depends um, when you're watching him, but Marty Smith covering NASCAR has always been really good, and it's once again, very good. His closing line in this trailer was absolute perfection. Think about what a badass that is. Yeah, that's a great way to end the narration of it and then go right into that sizzle reel, boom, January 30th, Netflix, come watch it. Great, absolutely loved every second of that. So tune in January 30th for that. Moving on to some NASCAR driver news now, we had our first somewhat important announcement of the Xfinity Series season, a driver doing a part-time schedule, not the driver I talked about in the last video, we're still waiting on that and I'm still trying to hold that back and 
not announce it because I have some respect out there for this guy. But Corey Heim will be doing a part-time schedule for Sam Hunt Racing in the number 26 Toyota Supra in 2024. He did make four starts for the team last year, and it was a bit of a mixed bag. The 2023 should be truck champion, if it wasn't for Carson Hosevar, is going to take on a bigger role in the Xfinity Series this year. I do find it interesting that he's making these starts for Sam Hunt Racing, though. And some people are like, well, they are a Toyota team. Correct. But Corey Heim is a blue chip prospect for Toyota. Think Caleb Williams, just without the crying and the painted fingernails. He's a guy that TRD and Toyota seemingly have a lot of faith in, and they want to put resources behind him, right? He's with the number one truck team in the Toyota camp at Tricon. You would think they would want to put him at the number one Xfinity team, being Joe Gibbs Racing. But him not being there does give some credence to the rumors that he and the Gibbs family don't necessarily get along. Maybe Ty Joffrey Gibbs had something to do with it. Not 100% sure. I do find it interesting, though, because Gibbs is running two full-time cars in 2024 that will have a rotating driver's seat in them. And you're telling me you couldn't fit Toyota's top truck prospect in one of those seats? Just interesting. And maybe he wants to go to Sam Hunt Racing, which is totally fine. But Corey Heim feels like he could be the next guy in that TRD camp to jump ship and head over to Ford or Chevy. Probably Chevy because Ford continues to just make terrible driver decisions. But who knows? Maybe. It just feels like Corey Heim probably could have landed at Gibbs if they wanted to make it happen. And I'm just a little curious about that. The other bit of driver's news I have isn't necessarily anything that we've seen on social yet. But I did get some messages on Tuesday that Matt Benedetto's deal, which he's rumored to have signed, fell through. So I've heard that Matt D signed a Cup Series deal. It is not with AM Racing. I'm not sure if he was ever in the AM Racing fold. But what I had heard was he had signed a Cup deal. I trust the person that gave me this info. And then they let me know on Tuesday that this deal has fallen through. Which, honestly, I'm starting to feel bad for Matt D at this point. I know I've clowned on him. But you see a guy out there trying as hard as he can to get into a seat, and it just continually doesn't work out for him. Granted, he has made his own bed in a lot of these situations. So who knows, but it appears that the Matt D saga will continue as he continues to search for an opportunity in 2024. And then to close out all the news that we had on Wednesday so far is the news that Gunther Steiner is out at Haas F1 as their team principal. Gene Haas put out a statement on Wednesday saying that he and Gunther basically had a difference in direction for the future of the team, and he instead decided to let Gunther go his own way and promote Ayo Komatsu, the former trackside engineering director, to the role of team principal. This is the same guy that Gunther berated on Drive to Survive, saying that they needed to get better, saying that they needed to fix everything, even though their drivers were Mick Schumacher and Nikita Mazepin, potentially one of the worst driver lineups we've ever seen in F1. So I actually have a few thoughts on this. I think Gene Haas would make a great Major League Baseball owner, right? He puts no money into it, wants to say that he owns it, and then gets mad at everybody around him when they don't have success. And it's like, well, what'd you expect? Basically, throughout the entire time, he did try at the very beginning, right? He had a decent driver lineup. Granted, he did take on some money there at the beginning for a pay driver, but he also hired Roman Grosjean based on talent, which was fine at the moment. And in 2018, as a team, Gunther Steiner led them to a fifth place in the Constructors' Championship. Really good achievement for a privateer team, essentially. But Gene kind of wants to take the cheap route on everything. He wants to be a customer team. He goes out there and just buys cars and buys all the components that he can without ever actually having to develop anything on their own. They basically become like a Ferrari satellite team, right? I mean, that's why they ended up taking Mick Schumacher, even though he cost them a couple millions of dollars in crashes. And then he goes out there and just continually hires bad drivers. Like I said, Mick Schumacher came over from Ferrari, brought some money with him in sponsorship, hires Nikita Mazepin, who obviously bought his way into that ride as well. And then he has tried last year with both having Kevin Magnussen and Nico Hulkenberg in the seats, two guys that are not being, are not paying to be there, but are instead being paid to be there. And it's just not working out. And part of it could be the fact that Haas continues to try to cut corners and save money where they can and not actually invest in the team. And I think that's probably what the big struggle was here. Gunther wanted more money, wants to be able to, you know, research, develop, and, you know, buy more things. And Gene's not looking to do that, which isn't a shock if you've watched Gene Haas, his teams over the last couple of years, both in NASCAR and in Formula One. Not sure if he's feeling the crunch on the business side outside of racing, but 
something's not working here, and it would probably be better for Gene at this point to just sell the team. And I hear that there's another American in Michael Andretti that's looking to buy a team if anybody would want to sell him one. But for Haas, their best career finish ever in a race was fourth in 2018 at Austria with Roman Grosjean behind the wheel, and since then it's been a bit of a mixed bag. They did, of course, get a pole with Kevin Magnussen at Brazil. That's fantastic and changing conditions. But outside of that, there hasn't really been much to write home about from the Haas team. They score points every now and then, but they're one of the slowest, if not the slowest team on the grid anymore. You can't even point out Williams as being the slowest team because Williams actually looks pretty competent now. Now it's just Haas at the back. They're the new minority for everybody that's been around longer than the Drive to Survive years. So it's a bummer to see Gunther out, but he'll have plenty of time now to help develop that CBS sitcom that he was working on. And Netflix is going to have to find a new star for Drive to Survive if they do continue it in 2024, which I don't know if they actually have announced that they are or not. It feels like it's kind of run its course at this point, so we'll see what happens. But Gene Haas just needs to make a decision on if he actually wants to contend or if he doesn't. And if he doesn't, that's fine. Just don't keep wasting all of our time and we'll just continue to ignore Haas like we already do. So, let me know in the comments, are you excited about the Netflix show? What do you think about Corey Heim going to Sam Hunt and the Gunther Steiner news? Kind of a surprise, I didn't expect it. It's kind of like the Pete Carroll news. Didn't expect to see him out as a Seahawks head coach either, but everything's changing at the moment. So, like and subscribe to the channel, follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.